Good day. How's it going? Welcome to this new pod episode. One of the best parts about being a furry is getting to travel to all kinds of meets, conventions, parties, and all other kinds of events with your fellow furries. But when you're a fursuiter, this could be easier said than done. So let's get into all the different ways to safely travel with your fursuit. Starting with the different types of bags and totes. Backpacks. Pros. Easy and affordable. You probably already have one. It's quite small. You can take it on as flight carry-on luggage. And it's very convenient to carry. Just throw it on your back and you are all good. Cons. Not a whole lot of space. It's only going to fit small fursuit parts, small heads, or heads that can compress down. Depends on the size of your bag. And zero impact protection. Your suit is going to feel every single blow to your bag. Duffel bags, sports bags, or gym bags. Pros. These are very easy to carry around. Just carry it like a handbag or put it over your shoulder. They're very spacious and flexible. They're usually small enough to be taken as flight carry-on luggage. But be sure to double check that. Check the dimensions of your bag against what the airline allows for carry-on. These can carry the average size partial and even some full suits. Cons. You won't be able to fit a suit with large parts or multitudes of padding. And again, no impact protection. Fursuit head bags. Pros. These allow you to carry your fursuit head by themselves while still protecting it. They're safe to take as airline carry-on luggage. They look really cool. And Mattresses has a tutorial on how to make them yourself. Cons. These must be custom made. You can't buy them pre-made. They can only be used on the head it was made for. And it can only carry your head plus whatever you can fit inside your head. These. Things. Laundry bag, shopping bag, red, white, blue bags. These have so many different names. Like I literally asked my Discord server and even they couldn't decide on one, but you know what I mean. They're made of plastic and have a zip. I also don't have one at the moment. Pros. These things are dirt cheap. You can go down to any discount shop and I'm sure you will find them for just a couple of bucks. They come in a very large variety of sizes. In fact, the jumbo ones can usually fit most full suits. And being made out of plastic weave, you can just fold them down when they're not in use. Cons. These are not strong. They will break and tear if they're too heavy or you stuff them too full. They are not safe to check in on an airline. They will eventually break. And no impact protection. Soft suitcases. Pros. Lots of space. The largest can fit most full fursuits. Good impact protection if you pack correctly. Usually has extra pockets on the front. And they're safe for airline check-in luggage. Cons. Annoying to cut around on foot for long periods of time. These take up a lot of space. You can't compact them down. These must be checked in on airlines if it's larger than 55 centimeters. Good ones are extremely expensive, minimum 200 bucks. And really cheap ones are at risk of breaking in transit. Usually the zips will come off, the handles come off, they just fall to pieces. As you can see here, mine has been very well loved. It's a proper Qantas brand one, and my mum got it for me for like my first overseas trip over 10 years ago, and I am still rocking it, and it is still doing me very, very well. So to save yourself buying a bajillion cheap ones, just get one good one. Hard suitcases. Pros. Lots of space, just like the soft suitcases, they can fit most full fursuits. Extremely good impact protection. Very safe for airline check-in luggage. And most of these will have four wheels on the bottom, so they're very easy to walk around with. Cons. Again, they take up a lot of space. They do not compact down in the slightest and must be checked in on airlines if it's larger than 55 centimeters. Good ones are pretty expensive. Cheap ones can crack or even smash and they can be fairly weighty. Plastic tote bins or storage containers. Pros. Extremely spacious. The biggest can fit large, heavily padded full suits or even multiple unpadded full suits. Very strong with very high impact protection and they're pretty lightweight. Cons. Cheap ones are not strong and they will absolutely smash under impact. Very cumbersome to carry around, usually no wheels or extended handles. On their own, they are unsafe for airline check-in luggage. These containers are not built to be thrown around by the airport staff. Most fursuits that get damaged or go missing during a flight are because they were packed in one of these containers and at some point the lid came off. You will absolutely need to add additional straps to ensure that lid stays on. Even then, they are not recommended for airline check-in. Now let's get into the packing itself. I'm going to use suitcases and a duffel bag for these examples, but you can apply these methods to any way you choose. Body suits and sleeves. My favorite method is to roll it up. Rolling suit parts over folding them ensures that nothing will get creased, so I highly recommend this for long distance travel. But folding is also fine if it's only for a short period. You can also vacuum pack your bodysuit. 
can be a bit tricky with padded suits. This isn't something I do often, so it took a bit of a struggle, but we got there. You might need to play with it a bit to get it as spatially efficient as possible. But with unpadded suits, it's super easy. Vacuum packing works great if you have limited space, but it will crease your suit if left for a few hours. However, creases can be easily fixed by giving them a light heat treatment with a hairdryer and a brush. And don't forget to make sure you have access to a vacuum wherever you're going. Otherwise, you won't be able to vacuum pack it back up when you go to leave. Most hotels will let you borrow their vacuum if you just ask. If your bodysuit has padding that can't be removed, try rolling it up the best you can. Otherwise, you will have to fold it or vacuum pack it. Padding. If your suit's padding can be removed, do so and pack it last. It's really good to use for protecting your head or anything else you're traveling with that's fragile. Otherwise, vacuum packing is great for transporting padding since it doesn't matter if it gets creased. Alternatively, if they're filled with stuffing, you can completely unstuff them and then buy more stuffing at your destination. Heads. Heads can be put in a bag with the rest of your suit, no problem. But if you're short on space or just prefer it, you can carry them separately in another bag or just by themselves. Some foam heads can also be vacuum packed, but definitely ask your maker about that one. I was definitely not game to try it on any of mine. If you are the maker, you'll have to do some trial and error testing on your heads just to see whether or not they can survive the vacuum packing. Be prepared to do some fixing. If you're going on a flight and your head has a base made out of resin or was 3D printed, you are going to need to take extra precautions to protect your head from impact. Heads with these bases are at risk of cracking and snapping if hit hard enough. So get creative, wrap it in your bodysuit, surround it with padding, wrap it in clothing, use bubble wrap, anything to get it to a point where you'd feel comfortable throwing your bag across the room. Because that's literally what the airline staff are going to do with it. Otherwise, you'll need to take your head with you as carry-on luggage. Hand paws. These ones are pretty easy. The usual trick is to just roll them up and put them inside your fursuit head. Otherwise, they can be squeezed in wherever. Feet paws. Pack them in your bag facing paw side out, especially if they're outdoor feet paws. This way, if there's any dirt on them, they won't dirty the rest of your suit. Otherwise, you can also just vacuum pack them. Tails. Most tails can be put either to the side or on top, but large tails will get tricky if you can't otherwise remove their padding. You may just have to put them in last on top of everything or vacuum pack them. Old Picari's large foam tail was the main reason I needed two suitcases to transport him. Unique extras. If your suit has extra parts to it, such as wings, large horns, or multiple tails, you will have to play some fursuit Tetris until you can find something that works. There's just so many variables here that I'm afraid you're on your own for this one. Try asking your maker or owners of suits with similar parts for advice. Fursuit supplies. Pack your disinfectant in a waterproof baggie to prevent it from damaging your suit if it breaks or leaks. I get a lot of you guys in the comments asking what this is, so please check out the link in the description to learn about why you need it and how to make it. Under Armour compacts pretty small, so it's easy to sneak among your fursuit, such as in your feet paws, in your head, or just shoved in a corner. Accessories can be placed among your suit as well, but larger ones may need to be carried separately, put in another bag, or vacuum packed. And lastly, your fursuit brush, the most important. Those lovely bristles do need to be protected, so put them against something soft, otherwise they may get smushed and bent. Optional supplies. A drawstring bag. These are great to wear while you suit, so you have a guaranteed safe place for your phone, your wallet, your room key, medical necessities, and anything else you always have on you. They flatten down to virtually nothing, so it's really easy to pack with your suit. If you're going to a con but staying outside the con hotel and don't want to wear your suit walking between them, pack yourself a large laundry bag. You can use it to transport your suit between hotels, and while you're in suit, you can have it folded up in your drawstring bag or with a handler. If you're going to be suiting over multiple days, pack yourself an emergency repair kit. You'll need a sewing needle, thread, safety pins, tape, and a small pair of scissors. These will be more than enough to improvise a temporary fix for any damage or breaks. If you can't drink from a bottle with your head on, it's a good idea to pack some extra long drinking straws for when you want to rehydrate, but not break the magic. Carpet Spot Cleaner. These work wonders for removing stains from suits. Just like the disinfectant, be sure to pack it in a waterproof baggie just in case. Then the only other things to keep in mind when packing your fursuit is what your method of travel itself is. The easiest being a car, because you're in control of your stuff 100% of the time and you don't have to carry anything over long distances. I know multiple people who don't even pack their suit in anything for car travel, they just literally chuck it all in the back seat and then when they get to the actual event, they just get in and out of suit at their car. If you plan on keeping your suit in the car for a long period of time, make sure it's not in direct sunlight. 
The fake fur that is used on fursuits is actually damaged by heat, and a car in the sun on a hot day can certainly achieve that. I would also recommend that you label your bag or tote with a big mascot costume to help prevent against theft. Whenever a fursuit is stolen from a car, it's usually because the thief wasn't actually a furry. They just broke into the car, grabbed the biggest thing, and hoped for the best. If you're carpooling with friends, make sure you all talk to each other and work out how big all your luggage combined is. You might be a little bit stuck if your friend rolls up in their Lancer and your suit needs three storage containers. If you're traveling on foot, whether it's just going down to the local park or using public transport to get to a meet, make sure you pack your suit in a way that you are comfortable walking long distances with. I would highly recommend using something with wheels or can be worn on your back. It's a little bit tricky if you have a really big suit and traveling on foot is your only transport option, but when there's a will, there's a way. I used to lug my two massive full suitcases of old Bakari half an hour from my house to the train station. Then I would stay on that train for an hour, transfer trains, ride another 15 minutes, and then walk 20 minutes just to get to my weekly furry meet. And an extra note, if you're using public transport, please, please, please be considerate of others. Don't put your furs in on the seats if there aren't many left, and do your best to not block the aisles. And lastly, air travel. The one that everybody is afraid of because your suit is going to be in someone else's hands for a few hours and they are not going to be careful with it. The majority of the packing I just showed you in the suitcases was done with air travel in mind. I've flown with packing that way multiple times. Like I said back in the pros and cons, if you're using a plastic tote bin, you have to use straps to strap the lid down. Bungee cords, nylon straps, heck even belts. Just you need to keep that lid on to stop it from popping off in transit and then your suit could get damaged or even lost. It has happened to multiple people in the past, even like the top of the line action packers with the super fancy clasps. They are not exempt from this. You need straps, strap your bin down or you're going to become a part of this statistic. Plastic storage bins were not made for commercial airline travel. It's also possible that once your bag's been checked in, the airline security may go through it for an inspection. Avoid packing things like batteries, loose cables, anything remotely gun shaped just so they don't have much incentive to go through it in the first place but it can still happen anyway. They won't know how to properly put your suit back in once they've taken it out so when you get it back it may be creased or damaged. Unfortunately there's just really not much you can do about this. Like I've heard of people packing in packing instructions for them but look they're not going to bother to take the time to do that I'm afraid. But luckily, inspections without you directly there are extremely rare. I've never had it happen to me or any of my friends, and we travel with our suits a lot. So don't let it stress you out, but it's also not a bad idea to get insurance on your bag. And lastly, don't forget, you still need space for your normal things that you would take when you travel. Clothing, toiletries, like, more often than not, I'll finish packing my suit and I'll be like, yeah, done, go to cl- oh, wait. Normal things. For air travel, I'll usually try to put them in my carry-on luggage, but don't forget to take out anything that don't allow there, like razors, aerosols, and any liquids that go above their limit. Otherwise, it is easy enough to just like shove in every nook and cranny with your fursuit. Sometimes I get questions about wearing your fursuit on air travel, because it has been done before. Those people that have done it got very explicit permission. Please don't rock up to the plane in your fursuit. Be sure to get it specially arranged with the airline beforehand. And I think that just about covers everything travel-wise. I don't really know about boats. I've never traveled with a boat on fursuit. Boat on fursuit. Boat on fursuit. I asked Twitter and it's really not much different to a plane. So there you go. Let me know in the comments if you have any fursuit travel related questions. I will try and get to them the best I can. Or leave me some of your stories or even horror stories when you travel with your fursuit. A patron shout out to Pete Flax. Thank you so much, Pete Flack, for being one of my amazing patrons and helping bring this video to these guys. And of course, thank you so much for watching. Wouldn't be here without that. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye!